Hey guys, it's Holly here for PlayStation Access. Now we are on the E3 show floor and we're talking about Uncharted The Lost Legacy now. Hi. Hey. Now, this is the, the one thing I think I really want to clear up. This is not DLC, right? That is absolutely correct. It is not DLC. Uh, <laughs> it started as DLC. We, we originally were uh, offering up that uh, Explorer's Pack and yeah. we said we're going to have single player DLC content. That was the intent. But as we initially started uh, developing it, uh, we sort of realized, you know, Telling an Uncharted story just takes time, you know, yeah. because you not only do we need to introduce uh, the characters, especially since we're now playing as Chloe, we really need to yeah. get a chance to get to know her uh, a little bit and Nadine. Uh, but of course, you know, part of the feeling of Uncharted is that feeling of exploration and getting really deep into a space, yeah. and that takes time. Set pieces take time. You know, the little slow moments that we like to have take time, and so the scope of the project just kept uh, ballooning and ballooning and now it's a full standalone game so uh, you know whoops but you know we're pretty happy about it no i think that's good you've said the right words it's a full standalone game now what if someone hasn't played for some reason hasn't played uncharted well they can certainly pick up the uncharted collection but if they haven't played <laughs> uncharted um yeah no we designed it to be as standalone as possible so okay. you know for the people who've uh, played the games of course you know they're going to recognize chloe and nadine and they're going to see all the little callbacks and all that kind of thing but if you're brand new to the series uh it's a really good point of entry because it doesn't require that you have any prior knowledge of the uh, earlier games from a writer's point of view then what's it like writing chloe and nadine for this because you're not you're not just reskinning Nathan Drake. No, And it's exactly. really important that, because you have the witty one-liners, but making it sound like something Chloe would say and not just, yeah, not just a reskin. Uh, well, there's a, there's a lot of factors into that. I mean, first of all, I mean, Chloe and uh, Nathan Drake, uh, they come from a similar background. They're both treasure hunters, but, you know, they both have slightly different uh, philosophical outlooks, you know. Uh, <laughs> That's one way of putting yeah. it. So, you know, Nathan Drake, he's got a little bit of a hero complex. He likes to throw himself into danger for ostensibly for the sake of uh, saving, you know, people or the world or what have you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he's also, you know, an unadmitted uh, adrenaline junkie, so yeah. that's all part of it. Chloe's a little bit more uh, pragmatic. Uh, she's all about uh, self-preservation, and so, you know, she will, you know, go out and she'll put herself in danger for, you know, uh, a good payout, but that has a limit and you know if she thinks uh, you know uh, in order to save her skin she will you know do or say anything to uh, get out of a bad situation and that's kind of you know you saw that interplay between the two of them in Uncharted yeah. 2 and now we have uh, Chloe who's uh, working with Nadine Ross who you know is unique among Uncharted antagonists in that uh, you know she was actually alive at the end of the game yeah. uh, but yeah. also uh, but also the thing with her is you know she's got a military background mm. she is very practical she is tactical she likes to have a plan Chloe uh, is very off the cuff, uh, you know, very improvisational, and you know, she just kind of flies by the seat of her pants. So, you know, the fun there is sort of coming from uh, what do you do when these two people are put into a situation where they have to work together, you know? How do they develop trust? Do they develop trust? And all that sort of thing. So, those are large parts of it. And, you know, of course, you know, we're not deviating from uh, the controls and the gameplay that everybody's uh, used to yeah. in Uncharted. But, you know, we've done a completely unique new set of animations for Chloe. Yeah, it feels the, the, feels like a different person. The fighting style is different. That's uh, good. Everything else like that. And also uh, what brings to it, apart from uh, our writing that we do, uh, you know, the actors themselves bring a lot of themselves yeah. to the uh, character. So, you know, Nolan North is, you know, a funny human being. And he, than life. And he comes up with all kinds of uh, off-the-cuff things, like when we're recording things. And uh, Claudia Black, who plays Chloe, she does the same thing, and they both have their own so senses of humor. So we incorporate little bits of them into the character as well. What about the, the use of Nadine? Because obviously we saw her in Uncharted 4. She, I, I think she's incredible. Oh, cool. But when did you guys sit down as a team and go, you know what, we should really explore Nadine some more. Was there always a kind of plan to explore Nadine more? There was no plan. I mean, we knew we, <laughs> like we, we, knew we had to, uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, we knew we had to, no wonder we, we relate to those characters yeah. so well. I mean, we definitely planned on like, you know, doing the additional story content, mm. but uh, at the beginning, we explored all kinds of different options with many different characters. And uh, we, kept, cool. uh, we kept circling back to Chloe because, um, well, one, she was a fan favorite from Uncharted 2, yeah. and two, uh, you know, um, we were looking at Uncharted 4's story and thinking, like, does Chloe have a place in this? And she really didn't. And we don't like, you know, you know shoehorning in cameos for the sake yeah, of cameos. Yeah, she really didn't. Did, like, now and looking at it, yeah, I don't know where you would have... Yeah, I mean, it would have been her popping in saying, like, Drake, what are you doing? This is dangerous. Why are you being stupid? And then she would have disappeared, and that would have been pointless. No. So, so for this, you know, she just seemed like... You know, she's got an interesting backstory. You know, she's uh, she's half Indian, half Australian. You know, we decided to set the game in India so that we could sort of like play off that uh, idea of her heritage a little bit and see where that takes uh, her character. And uh, so, yeah, ultimately, 
you know, it just seemed like a, a good direction to go for this one. And uh, yeah, we did. The one thing we knew is we didn't want to do another story with Drake because we felt like we had sort of like put his uh, story to rest. And you guys had always said that, you know, this is this is you know, the beast end, right? Yes. And it was really nice actually that you know it wasn't like oh go on then. One, yeah. one it's more. like it's definitely it's a thief's end. It's not all the, the thieves, thieves end. end. So yeah. right. So so that's why Chloe's there's in still this one. More to be there's done. A, there's a couple of thieves still out there. <laughs> Let's talk finally about the antagonist. Now we saw a gameplay demo here at E3. Uh, he seems like an ass. A uh, little bit. Uh, but you know. very. Uh, it's, very intelligent. It's that kind of the ones you really, really fear. They're not necessarily brute force guns blazing. Yeah. So uh, the antagonist uh, in charge of the Lost Legacy is a fellow by the name of Asav, and uh, he is, for all intents and purposes, a warmonger. He's kind of a little bit of a uh, rebel without a cause. Uh, and what he's been doing is he's been uh, going around India, uh, looting religious sites, stealing artifacts to help fund his uh, efforts. Uh, his goal ultimately is to uh, topple the Indian government because he believes uh, that uh, they are weak. He is somebody who is sees himself as a descendant of the wow. uh, Hoysala Empire, which is uh, the, one of the uh, ki old kingdoms in the area. And that's, in fact, the, they are the uh, creators of the uh, Golden Tusk of Ganesh, which is what everybody's after. Right. And so he is after the uh, tusk because for the uh, Hoysala, it was like their symbol of uh, strength and uh, dominance. Okay. And he feels that with this, he can, uh, you know, sort of like uh, bring his idea of order to the region. And you and definitely you picked up on the idea. It's like, yes, he is a lot more sort of like calm and controlled and yeah. intelligent. You know, probably the glasses, I don't know. But, yeah, uh, the glasses, the glasses but, they say a lot. But, you know, a lot of... Uh, a lot of what you do when you're trying to uh, write antagonists is you never want them to uh, just, you know, be the bad guy. You know, uh, mm. you know, antagonists. Nobody sees themselves as the antagonist, right? They all think that they yeah. are doing the right thing yeah. for their own purposes. So that's uh, one thing that we always have to keep in mind. And then you know, him coming up against uh, Chloe, uh, who uh, he sees as uh, kind of an outsider, uh, is uh, you know, sort of bringing some interesting conflict as well. Amazing. Thank you very, very much. I know you've been super busy and been wanting to chat to you for most of the show. So thank you so much for your time. Hey, thanks for having me. This You're going to uh, go back and do more demos now, I think. I've got a couple more demos and then I'm heading back to the office and we got to get this game finished. Yeah, there's, there's a game to release. Yeah. Uh, a standalone game, not DLC. Not DLC. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to stay tuned to my YouTube channel because there's loads more coming up.